Hello and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll take a look at the Rotating Image Tiles widget, which is part of the key add-ons for Elementor Premium Collection. Here you can see an example of this widget's use. The Rotating Image Tiles will create a very dynamic display of your images. It works by dividing your image into grid pieces and then rotating each of those pieces individually. You can choose your grid size, i.e. the number of grid tiles you want to have. The options are 4, 9, and 16. Moreover, the curvature you see on some tiles can be enabled or disabled depending on your preference. There are all kinds of handy options included in this widget, and we're going to see exactly what those are in the coming tutorial. But before I get ahead of myself, let's see the rest of this page. It shows different design solutions applied to different images to give you a better idea of the things you can do with the Rotating Image Tiles widget. While this widget is focused on the image, the rest of the key add-ons collection is there if you want to create sections with mixed and matched elements and differing types of content. And, as you can see from the examples on this page, the rotating image tiles is perfectly complemented by section titles, buttons, and similar text-based widgets. So, you can combine images and text, add links, create buttons, and more. With all that said, let's see how to set up this widget. We'll need to head over to the back end. I prepared the page that I will be working in and added a bit of text content to it. I plan to create a copy of one of the sections from the page we were just on. Since our focus is on the rotating image tiles, I added the content in the left column ahead of time. And I did that using the section title widget. Now I'm going to click here to open the widget selection and I'll search for the rotating image tiles widget. There it is. Drag it over to the right column. OK. This is normal. The widget is invisible by default because we haven't added any pictures for it to display. So, naturally, we'll start by selecting our images. You need four of them. I'll click here to open the media library. If you haven't already uploaded the images you want, you can do so now using the Upload Files tab. However, since my images are here already, I'll just select them. I'll use these four. Create a new gallery. Now we see our selected images, and we can rearrange their order while we're in this window. I'll put mine like this. OK, insert. Before we move on, I mentioned you need to have four images, and we have this note saying the required number of images is four as a reminder. OK, with our images added, the next thing we need to set up to make them show is the tiles. For the tiles, we first need to pick their number. This represents the grid, i.e. the number of sections your image will be divided in. You can pick between 4, 9, and 16. I'm going to stick with 4 for my design. That means my image will be divided into 4 equal parts, or tiles. Now, how those tiles will look depends on the settings you make next. Here in the Tiles section, we have a button to add items. You're going to need to create as many items as you have tiles. I'll click to create my first item now, so you can see the options involved. The first item is for customizing the first tile. The second will be for the second, and so on. The tiles go from left to right, and this applies to each row in the grid. So, the item I just created will help us customize the first tile, the one that's going to be in the top left corner. And it's going to do that for all the images in my gallery. If we look at the options, the first one determines whether the tile will show or not, and the subsequent options allow us to set how the first tile of each of the images in the gallery will look. So, image 1 shape position is for the first tile of the first image and how we want it to be shaped, and we have options for each of the remaining images. OK, I'll start making the settings for my design and you'll see exactly what I mean. Each option comes with a drop-down that covers different corners of the tile. This lets us pick which corner of the tile will get trimmed to create the varied shapes we saw on the starting page. For my first image, I'll set top left. For the second, bottom left. Then for the third one, top left. And for the fourth and last one, bottom left. First tile done. On to the second one. I'll quickly make the settings I need here. We are tackling the second tile now, in my case that's the top right one. OK, third item now, that's the bottom left tile. Just a second while I set it up. There. And last one, the fourth tile in the bottom right corner. 
Okay, done. With this set, my gallery images are displayed properly, and the tiles rotate to make room for the next image. Each of them has the appropriate cutout bits that I set in the items options. As you can see, these settings can be combined to create different looks for each of the images. To help us see this more clearly, I'll go back to the options, close this, and then find the rotation display. The default setting is 2500 milliseconds. I'll set 10,000 instead, to slow down the images so they don't get replaced so swiftly while we're going through the settings. Now, just to make it clear, let's go over what I've done. I created these four items. They correspond to different pieces of the image. The first item is the first tile, this one here, and the subsequent tiles are matched to the items in descending order. If we open the item, we can see the options used to create cutout bits from the tiles. The first tile of the first image, the one we see right now on the page, has its top left corner removed. The first tile of the second image has its bottom left corner removed, as you can see on the page. Then the first tile of the third image has its top left corner removed. You can see the curve of it when you look at the display on the page. And finally, we look at the last option, that's the image 4 shape position. We have the bottom left corner removed from the fourth image's first tile. And here is that cutout. As you've seen, each of the images, thanks to the settings I made, creates a different look and shape. It's an easy way to add interest and visually diversify your gallery. Let's quickly analyze the first image on its own. We said that the first tile has its top left corner removed, and here we see that. Then, for the second tile, I set bottom left. So for this tile, we can see where the corner was removed. Next, if we look at the third item for the third tile, we can see that one is complete. That's because I used none as the setting, which means its shape wasn't altered in any way, so it remains whole. Finally, the fourth item covers the last tile. That's this one here, and we can see it's missing its bottom right corner, just as I set in the options. So, this was an overview of the first image, but the same principle applies to all the remaining images in your gallery. How you tackle these options is a matter of perspective. You can go by items or tiles and set each one if you already know what kind of shape you want for your images. Or you can go through the options selectively, picking those that will help you adjust the look image by image, rather than tile by tile. Alright, let's see what other options we have for this widget. I'll adjust the rotation display, I don't need it to be this slow for the look I'm making. I'll set it to 1400 milliseconds. And now that the images are back to a faster rotation, I can show you the first option in the items, namely what happens if we switch the show tile setting to no. If you turn it off, then the tile simply won't appear, and that will apply to all the images in the gallery. I turned off the setting in the first item, so all the first tiles are gone. If you do this in one of the other items, then the corresponding tile will be gone. Still, I'll switch this back to yes, as my design involves all the tiles showing. Ok, I wanted you to see that option in practice, but now we can go back to the non-item options, such as the holder width height. The value is in pixels, so the 500 represents the dimensions of our element in pixels. If I move the slider, you can see the width and height increase. For the value here, I'll set 432 pixels. It's better balanced with the text on the left now. Alright. Of the remaining options, we have the Developer Tools section. It contains just one option. If you switch it to Yes, then it will display the widget in the form of a WordPress shortcode. The light grey text you see on the page. You can copy this text for use elsewhere on your site. Alright, I'll switch this back to now. Besides that, we have the help section. It contains links to various helpful resources in case you need them. And that's all for the options in the content tab. This widget doesn't include the style tab since it's image based. However, we do have the advanced options tab. And while it has several useful options for responsiveness, positioning, entrance animations and more, it's something you get with all Elementor widgets and not unique to our Rotating Image Tiles widget, so we won't be covering it in this tutorial. I'll hit update now to save my work, and then refresh the page so we can see how the finished version of my element looks. Here we are. 
the images I picked are there, and their shapes correspond to the settings I made. Now, if you want to see more examples of what you can do with this widget, you can head back to the page we started from. Here you'll find other design solutions and examples of what a different combination of images and shapes might accomplish. This is a 9 tile grid, and if you scroll down, you'll see an example with a 16 tile grid that even has a couple of tiles switched off. Further below, you'll see the example I chose to copy for this tutorial. So, hopefully, all of this will have shown you the possibilities of this widget and inspired you to try it out. If, after watching this tutorial, you have any questions, comments or suggestions you'd like to leave us, please drop us a line in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe and be the first to learn about any new tutorials on our channel. Thank you for watching.